All right, hi, welcome back, Attorney Steve Vonder, and welcome to another exciting video. Today we are talking about music, using music for political campaigns. Can that be free? Can it be a fair use under the copyright laws? If something's not fair use, it is infringement. And the question is, is somebody, is the music rights holder going to come after you? So let's take a look. Let's go to the presentation here. Um, let's go to the second slide here, okay? So politicians, you know, they like to do the rallies, get the crowds all riled up. And one easy way to do that is to have some cool music playing, you know, a little Tom Petty, a little Bruce Springsteen in the background. And um, that's all fine and dandy, but you want to make sure that Tom Petty's not going to sue you. Bruce Springsteen's not going to sue you. Don Henley had a lawsuit, okay? So you have to be careful. You don't want to end up in an infringement lawsuit that could be costly. And um, so we're going to look at a few cases today and see what the courts do when they get faced with a test like this, with a um, challenge to the use of music for a political campaign, okay? First, I'm going to show you the four-factor Fair use balancing test. Uh, fair use, it's a four-factor test. I don't care if somebody's alleging an infringing uh, video, uh, music, sound, any, whatever. It, it, the courts are going to apply this four-factor test in every case. No one factor is exclusive. No one factor is determinative. They're going to balance it and on balance, after you apply the four factors, it's going to spit out a decision, either infringement or fair use, protected fair use, okay? Uh, so here you have it right there. There's your test. Let's go on. Um, what does this mean to the politician? I'll tell you right now. I'll give you my conclusion. Get permission, okay? If you're a senator, you're running for Senate, the Congress, the House, Treasurer, running for the presidency. I know it's tempting. I'm, you know, this is what my campaign's all about, not backing down. You know, it's like, okay. So, of course, Don't Back Down would be a great song for you. But you have to consider the rights holder and are they going to sue you, okay? Um, getting permission. Re remember, the artist may not agree with your political viewpoints. If they don't agree with your viewpoints, call up their lawyer and say, hey, turn to Steve, take this guy down. Oh, okay, you got it. Um, so that's what we're talking about. And here, as I note here, politicians are not immune from copyright infringement lawsuits just because you're running for office. Maybe you're saying, well, I am a, I'm trying to be a public servant. Um, and so I can't get sued. No, that's not true. As it notes here, respect the artist as you would want to be respected. You wouldn't want someone using your music and you have a totally different political view. I mean, you, you can get it, right? So let's go on. Let's do a few case studies. Here we go. Number one, Bobby McFerrin, the song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Can't we all just be happy like this dog right here? I think it would be a much better world. Uh, Bobby McFerrin, 1988. George H.W. Bush, that stands for Herbert Walker Bush, was running for campaign president, uh, his campaign for president. Uh, Bobby McFerrin objected. And, um, and so ultimately, it was noted that McFerrin was a Dukakis supporter, if you remember Dukakis. So um, the end result didn't go down so well. And uh, Bush changed his theme to, this land is your land. Not quite as catchy. Not quite as catchy. So uh, there you go. And the quote, the great song, the landlord said your rent is late. You may have to litigate. Of course, I love that lyric, right? That's great. All right, so there's one case. Let's go to the next. Isaac Hayes versus Bob Dole over the song Soul Man. I'm a soul man. 1996. Um, Rondor Music was a rights holder here. They got involved. Bob Dole trying to use it. The crowd caught on and they started singing, I'm a Dole Man. So anyway, so they're using their song for their campaign. The artist objected, says, hey, man, we are liberal. And last person we're going to vote for is Bob Dole. Like, come on. And they ended up changing their song. Bob Dole changed his song to American Boy by the great Eddie Money. Love Eddie Money. Listen to Two Tickets to Paradise. Oh, that's such a great song. All right, let's moving on in our case study, Fair Use Music Law Political Campaigns. 
Boston, the wonderful band Boston, go out if you if you're even if you're a younger kid, go out and listen to that old Boston album, just tremendous. 2008. Well, here we have Mike Huckabee. Mike Huckabee's a Republican. Um, he was running for presidential campaign once again. Uh, and use their great song "More Than a Feeling," and it's and Boston said, "Quote here as a show, they felt ripped off, claiming they would never supported a political campaign. Why are you just using our music? Like we're not, you know, we're not. That's not our thing. So get permission, pay a license. They probably wouldn't have given you permission. So you probably have to go to another song. Okay." Again, fair use is tough to get when you're in, in a political campaign because you're not, if you think about it, you're not really transforming the song when you have, when you have the song more than a feeling, you're using it kind of the same way they used it in their, on their rock concerts to get everybody pumped up, right? More than a feeling. And so in the presidential, presidential campaign, you're not really transforming it. You're not creating something new. Unless you're creating a parody. Now, if you're making totally fun of a song, that could be a totally different story. And I think there was a um, all, there's a song, All She Wants to Do is Dance, Dance. Um, somebody did, All She Wants to Do is Tax, Tax. And anyway, so even that sounds like a parody, but even in that case, the court said, no, it's no parody. So it's really tough to get parody. It is possible, but you'd pretty much have to like rewrite the song and, and really, and it would have to really be funny. So that is a possibility. All right, that's Boston. Let's moving on to Jackson Brown, the wonderful Jackson Brown and the great song Running on Empty. Uh, this is John McCain. I know John McCain came up in a couple cases uh for uh fair use when i was doing some research on this uh he came up a couple times apparently he doesn't believe he has to get permission apparently but he did a, a uh running on empty it was an ad trying to mock obama that his campaign was out of gas so to speak apparently that one didn't go over so well either uh, but this one ended the result ended in an undisclosed settlement and an apology okay so and it can get embarrassing as a politician running for an office you know, and then it ends up going on the front page that you were trying to rip off somebody's song, right? So that doesn't turn out so well. But there it is, Jackson Brown running on empty. What a great song. Go listen to that song, too. All right, another one of my favorite, absolute favorite singers, Heart. Uh, if you haven't heard Heart, Stairway to Heaven, Heart's version of Stairway to Heaven, Led Zeppelin was there in the stage. Just, you got to Google that. It's one of the, literally one of the best all-time songs i've ever seen one of the best uh obama was there in the front row it was at the kennedy center oh man you gotta just watch that next we have heart versus sarah palin remember the soccer mom the soccer man from alaska um this is heart 2008 the song at issue barracuda and look at that barracuda right there isn't that a beautiful fish Beautiful fish. Um, the result, um, in this case, now this is important. Um, if you're a politician, there is an ASCAP license. This is one of the performing rights organizations. You can get a license and you may want to call them if you're running for an office. Call ASCAP so at least you have some attempt to acquire the licensing rights for, your, for a song of your cho choosing. Per ASCAP, the ASCAP political campaign license agreement provides a blanket license to perform any or all of the millions of compositions in the ASCAP repertory. So there's like tons and tons of songs. Find one you like and you can use it, right? However, ASCAP does allow, uh, uh, ASCAP members may ask ASCAP to exclude specific songs from a particular political campaign's license. Like, I don't want anybody using Don't Back Down. That's just, that song's not political you know, check the box. I don't want it to be used for that. Okay. So it's very important. Uh, here they continued to use it, asserting that they had the ASCAP blanket license. So this one apparently worked. Uh, next moving on rush, Tom Sawyer, the name Tom Sawyer, me, mean guy. Um, 2010, we have Rand Paul. I believe he was running for president as well. Uh, the Senator, I believe he's from Kentucky. Uh, Republican Senator for Kentucky. Result, cease and desist letter. Again, probably made some headlines, you know, rush, rush, um, attack, you know, rush goes after Rand Paul, you know, so you don't, you don't really need the headlines, those kinds of headlines. 
Uh, next one, moving on. Journey, don't stop believing. You're just the city girl. Uh, this is Newt Gingrich, 2011. Um, he, Newt, I note here in the note section, Newt was also challenged by Survivor for bam, 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 eye of the tiger. Uh, he ended up with some cease and desist letters dealing with those. Moving on. Uh, I won't back down. Tom Petty, here it is, as I was telling you. Uh, this deal, this case dealt with Michelle Bachman. And Michelle Bachman was using I Won't Back Down and also American Girl. Great songs. Tom Petty's awesome. Um, Petty, however, was an Al Gore supporter and they sent a cease and desist. Michelle Bachman, I believe she was a Republican senator from Minnesota, as I recall. Um, now, current modern day, um, Carrie Lake, uh, the Arizona she was running for governor or is running, is making some legal challenges uh, to the voting, and uh, she's using the song as well. Tom Petty once again surface say, "Hey, what are you doing? Don't use this. Don't use my song." Okay. Uh, next, Cindy Lauper. Remember her? Girls just wanna have fun. Um, True Colors. True Colors is a song at issue. Two thousand and twelve. This was uh, the DNC, Democrat National Committee. They uh, wanted to do some ads for their, uh, to attack Mitt Romney, to uh, Mitt Romney, the uh, governor, uh, I think he was governor from uh, Utah, I believe, or senator, senator from Utah. And uh, there was an ad that was in a YouTube video. Eventually, uh, Cindy Lauper didn't like it. She didn't want to have her name out there with this kind of stuff. They, she had the takedown, she had the ad removed from YouTube, and gave the quote, the classic quote, Lopper said, Mitt Romney can be discredited without using my song about his true colors. <laughs> Just a classic line. So uh, again, once again, uh, a use not being proper. And the recent one, Neil Young versus Donald, the Donald, I'll call him Donald Trump. Artist Neil Young, 2015, Keep on rocking in the free world. Uh, Donald Trump. Uh, it turns out Neil Young, you guys all heard the tiff that he had uh, this, this past year, I believe, with his music. And um, so he's real particular about his music. Need to be careful there. Um, Young says he supported Bernie Sanders. And Trump claimed, however, that he had an ASCAP license, that we were just talking about the ASCAP license. But out of respect, he said he'd stop using the song. All right, key takeaways, that's it. There's a lot of other songs. I mean, this is just a little sampling. It, it's incredible how many uh, actual cases there are. But um, key takeaways, get permission. If you're running for a political office, you, you are not immune from a lawsuit just because you think you're going to be a public servant or you, it's not for, you know, run, you're not running a business. It's just you running a campaign. There is no immunity you can get sued. You can pay up to 150000 in damages, attorney fees, you know, all that stuff. So um, get permission. Public domain, I put that there just by chance. You know, some songs back from the 1900s, early 1900, 1910, um, would be qualified to be in the public domain. That means there is no copyright. They don't have copyright. They don't enjoy copyright protection. Um, double check. Make sure before you choose a song that you do some good research on it, though. Uh, but public domain is a possibility. And fair use, question mark, uh, maybe a really good parody would be uh, so a real good parody, possibly. Um, that's it. You got my, my info, my details, my services there. If you need it, pause it. California, Arizona, we are licensed to practice law. We can help you politicians in these two states if you need some IP services from a copyright lawyer, okay? And there's my contact. If you need it, get a hold of us, 877-276-5084. This has been General Legal Information Only. This is Attorney Steve. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. It's not going to hurt you. It actually feels good because you're going, I like that. I like that a lot. So anyway, General Information, thanks for watching. I got to run. Have a great day. Bye-bye.